And uh, now we're going to move to our discussions, and I'm very happy. We have two very prominent um, people to come and comment on this. Uh, let me start first with Dave Orden, David Orden, um, who many of you know very well. Uh, David worked here from 2000 and, um, what, two or so? All the way up through uh, 2016. Uh, he's been at Virginia Tech. Um, uh, since the uh, mid or early 1980s, uh, he is currently uh, serving as director of the Global Issues Initiative at Vir Virginia Tech's Institute for Society, Culture, and Environment. Um, and while David was here he, and continues to work a lot on trade issues and agricultural policy issues, but I just want to highlight two of his books. Uh, one, uh, a book dating back to the mid 90s, he did with uh, Terry Rowe and Phil Parberg. Uh, called Policy Reform in, in American Agriculture. Just an excellent book, uh, a dissection of the 96 uh, Farm Bill um, going through uh, a, a very, just an excellent study in political economy. Uh, and then his work uh, more recently on WTO disciplines on agricultural support, co-authored with David Blanford and unfortunately the late Tim Joslin, uh, is, is another hallmark of just very good and careful scholarship on uh, agricultural support measures. Delighted to have David back here, so please. Well, thanks, Joe. Uh, it's a pleasure to be back here and uh, see some old friends and uh, see the new building a, few, uh, a second time. Um, the, as Joe pointed out, the, the volumes, it's a lot on, on the table today because we um, have a new farm bill, and we also have this, you know, substantive two-volume uh, book of, uh, of analysis of foreign policy. So I, I want to start with the book. And as Joe said, they, they picked their title from World Agriculture and Dis Disarray, D.L. Johnson's famous book from 1973. Now, if price is always uh, an indication of value, we, we are in, these authors are in, and editors are in trouble because I picked this book up for $1 at a yard sale after a library had cancel it. So we know this book has been worth more than one dollar, even if the, even one dollar times the number of copies printed. Um, so the first thing I want to do is, is um, compliment, commend the authors and, and the editors for a, a really ambitious and successful two volumes. It's ambitious in a couple of ways. Farm policies are complex, have long histories, and are difficult to explain. And the book is informative for experienced readers and is accessible to people who are new to farm policy analysis. Secondly, the scope of the coverage is, is again ambitious. It covers not only all the dimensions of the Farm Bill, but also other areas of policy affecting agriculture, including biofuels, water regulation, futures markets, and competitiveness policies, food aid, so, which is in the Farm Bill, actually. So very comprehensive, two volumes, excellent reference material, and commend it to all of you, and, and thank the authors and editors for, for bringing it forth. Uh, second point is that at a helicopter level, uh, there's been an imperfect but positive arc in the evolution of U.S. foreign policies and towards less intrusive forms of support. And I think we really need to keep that in mind as we, you know, assess at any particular moment in time. Now, this has matched and enabled the, uh, the progress and competitiveness of U.S. agriculture, but it has also um, matched and enabled treating people in poverty with greater respect. And I think that reform advocates need to take more ownership. The book does mention a lot of these reforms in the historical presentations it makes, but I think reform advocates really need to take more ownership of this evolution as something that we should claim pride in and also uh, claim as something to build upon. So let me just give you, you know, if you get into it, the, the disarray that occurred in D. Gales Johnson era with export subsidies and quotas and, you know, um, stocks piling up on the streets of Midwestern towns as the government bought grain at these loan rates that farmers got for every bushel they produced. Just total chaos, if you will, in, in, ag in agriculture, in policy or sense. But let me just pick on one microcosm because it's been mentioned to, to illustrate that, which is peanuts. So Barry has pointed out that peanuts will really stand out. The decoupled income payments, price contingent income payments you get if you happen to have peanut base acreage are way out of line with the other commodities. We couldn't afford to have that level of support for all of the major commodities, but there's only a couple million acres of peanuts. So this is a real outlier. 
Uh, but it is decoupled. You get that maybe if you have base acres in peanuts, but you, you know, only about one third of peanut base acres is actually planted to peanuts. And we saw the effect of those high supports if they are coupled to production. Under the 2014 Farm Bill, there was a, for a while an opportunity to plant peanuts on other acres, and then if you planted them, get those payments. And that's where farmers expanded their peanut production. Anyhow, but just remember that there was a time in my lifetime, if not yours, that um, you, you peanuts were grown under quota. The market price was held well above the world price. You couldn't even transfer peanut quota from one farm to the other within one county. So policy has changed a lot. In those days, if you were a poor person getting food aid assistance, what you got was a tub of peanut butter. And so that's not so great compared to the electronic transfers we get to give to poor people now, which allows them to go to the store. Right, well, I'm, I'm in already minus 18 minutes, so I'm going to have to actually stop there. The, two, the, the next question to ask is, is farm policy in disarray? And I think if you look at an arc across current policies as opposed to over time, the authors make a very convincing case there's still a lot of disarray in agricultural policy, a lot of room for improvements. And I hope in the discussion we'll get a chance to hear from the authors some of the ways that these policies could be improved beyond some of the things we've already heard at this point.